Hey guys, Tilly here from Sialanda. Have you heard about those Russian criminals, those hackers that are out to get local businesses and you know destroy the economy? It's like everywhere you look, they seem to keep popping up and and frightening us. Look, go shoot, go away, go away, Russian, go away, Russian hackers. No, no good. <laughs> look, guys, I don't know if you know about my personal story as to why I started Sialanda in the first place, but my family was originally from Hungary. And when it was invaded by Russia in the 1950s, they came to the United States as refugees. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, since then, those same Russian terrorists have continued their work. Uh, they destroyed, uh, you know, my family's country, and they've since gone on to try and destroy this country. And, uh, you know, we, when we started this company a few years back, we wanted to protect the community against these kind of, you know, really bad, bad guys out there that are out here to destroy the, uh, the local economy. So uh, we thank you for your support and listening uh, to what we have to say each week. Um, you know, we're just here to help you. So uh, thanks for your time. But anyways, back to this little story that we started talking about. Um, now, let's talk about ransomware, just kind of in general. Ransomware typically comes in in the form of an email. And what will happen is click on a link um, from you know this email that Looks like it came from someone you know, and uh, at that point, it'll you know put something on your computer, and it'll either steal your data or completely lock it down and ask for money to get it back. Well, that's not how this ransomware works. These these new Russian hackers—they're actually called Evil Corp. Yes, Evil Corp. If you can believe that, and these guys called Evil Corp uh, have now been targeting corporate networks. And the way that it works is that they infected a bunch of websites, including even an advertiser website, and they were able to get people to install what looked like an update. And they did the update on their computer, and it did really nothing, except if you're a remote worker. If you're someone who's working from home for your company, connecting to your corporate network through something called a VPN or virtual private network. VPNs are real simple. It allows you to work from home, and it, it kind of like, tunnels you through the internet into your office's network. Now, when that happens, it looks like your computer is there in the office, just like you should be, could be, would like to be. Anyways, when you when that happens, now you have access to all your company's important data, servers, files, etc. Now, this, uh, this really evil corp software was looking for that kind of connection. And when it found one, it would then go in there and encrypt the critical servers inside of that company's network. Now, instead of demanding a few hundred bucks in Bitcoin for um, you know decrypting a simple small computer, now they can demand millions for decrypting critical servers and infrastructure devices that are being used by the company. Big, big stuff, right? Now, um, I hate to say it, but they were successful with 31 of the top 500 Fortune 500 companies in the, here in the United States. And that's really serious. So that leads me to our takeaway and how, it can, how we can keep this from happening in your company. Here's my takeaway. I love that sound, don't you? <laughs> look, here's what we gotta do. Let's look at the top three things that you can do inside of your company today that will make a difference. Number one is to look at a good EDR. Now an EDR is an endpoint detection response that's because antivirus is old hat. It's reactive to issues as they pop up versus proactive to issues as they might come up. EDR is the proactive response. Now, you wanna make sure you have a good EDR on all of the computers that are connecting to your network remotely, namely your work from home people. So have that in place. Number two is to have a good security awareness training program a review, let's call it a review, right? Because let's face it, this wouldn't be happening if users weren't accidentally maybe clicking on a link or going to a website and downloading some sort of update that they shouldn't be doing in the first place. And I get it, everyone's distracted. So let's just do a quick review, quick brush up. And you know, ongoing security awareness training, if you do it on a regular basis, it's gonna alert you to the latest methods that these guys are using to get inside of your business and destroy it. So put a good program in place. And if you don't have one, feel free to reach out. We can help you. Number three is to review your network for least privilege. 
Now, least privilege is a kind of security term that we use in the industry. It means that if someone is working for you, they don't have access to everything, just the things that they need to do their job. So for example, does your accounting have access to important customer data? Hmm. Does your sales department have access to payroll data? Hmm. If they do, you've got a problem. Not just because, you know, it's a kind of a security problem within your company, but if someone does in fact one of those systems, they can spread to others. And you'd be surprised how many times we walk into security audits and we find this stuff all the time. So do the audit yourself, clean up your own network, make it a, a nice clean environment, and you're gonna be a lot happier <laughs> if something does happen. So guys, if you found that these uh, tips were helpful to you, maybe that this video was entertaining, send it off to a friend, subscribe to our channel, like our videos, we always appreciate comments. And I'm Attila with Stylanda. Stay safe out there.